Good Friday morning, my dear church family. I hope things are going well for you. I hope you get a chance to get outside and enjoy the weather today. It's supposed to be a record 78 degrees today. But more than anything else, I, as always, hope that you're living your very best life in Jesus Christ. Well, as I was writing this devotional, I couldn't help but find it interesting that I can somehow always find the negative in even the most wonderful, positive situation if I give in to that mindset, especially when it comes to my own work. I have mentioned before my tendency to look for and find every flaw. Every tiny or not so tiny thing can cause me to lambaste myself for never seeming to get anything right. For example, while I was writing this particular devotional, I kept rewriting and kept rewriting, and every time I felt worse about myself because I couldn't quite get the right phrase. So eventually I just said, this is what it is. The thing is, that mindset can be about anything really, for me anyway. My music, my weight, my preaching, my relationships with others, my sewing, my writing. Like, like I said, even the recording of these devotionals. I mean, the list of things that I can get upset, upset about seems endless. <laughs> and the thing is that if left unchecked, this can and will cause me to become angry and sullen and grouchy and resentful and a whole host of other emotions which Satan uses to undermine my mental health and my relationship with the Lord. The thing is it causes me to lose my focus on him and instead focus on me, which I have found is the kiss of death. As much as I want to do things perfectly, the unheeded search for perfection can cause a huge burden and can undermine even the most stable Christian mind. And you know, I, I counsel a lot of people, and I include people of every age in this. I mean, kids as young as Landry to folks in their 80s are vulnerable to this Satan-driven attack on our minds. It's time for us to have a brief reminder on this Friday. If you were perfect, you wouldn't fit into God's plan for your life. Throughout Scripture, the Father uses imperfect people, not the popular nor the successful. He uses the poor, the broken, and the fearful. I mean, look, there's a whole list. Gideon was afraid. Rahab was a prostitute. Jacob was a deceiver. Paul persecuted the Christians. And David, well, he gave the order to have Uriah killed. See, what changed their path was faith and trust in God. I know it's hard, but we need to remind ourselves that no matter how imperfect we feel, we should never feel unworthy. No matter your past, God can and will change your direction. He will use what you have. He can use you if you are willing to do so. Look, the world is flawed, but in Him, restoration can always take place. It, we need to humble ourselves. See, God delights in you and he wants to display you to display his glory. I mean, in Corinthians 12, 9, he says, uh, he says, But he says, said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest upon me. Imperfection turns into perfection when you take your eyes off the stumbling blocks in your lives. There's again from Paul, Romans 8, 37. Know in all things that you are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We need to believe and trust in these words. So this little devotion this morning, is, no matter how poorly written, is a reminder that we're all imperfect and this imperfection causes us to remain humble. It allows us room to grow in every aspect of our lives, especially in our relationship with God. So... If you, like me, struggle with this kind of nonsense, this constant fear that you're being imperfect, well, I hate to say this on a Friday, but cut yourself some slack. <laughs> See, the thing is, someday we're going to be perfect. The Bible says so. The book of Hebrews speaks of the spirit of the righteous man being made perfect in Hebrews 12, 23. And as for me, well, hey, I can hardly wait to be perfect. But until then... I will thank God in all things, including my imperfections, and continue to do my very best for you, for me, for those I love, but most importantly, for the Lord. I hope you have a wonderful day. Like I said, I hope you get out to see the weather today. 
I hope to see everyone on Sunday, if humanly possible. I want you to know that no matter what, I'm here should you need me, and I truly love you all. See you soon. Bye-bye.